A few weeks ago, I carved this stone and brick wall out of XPS foam board insulation. This week, I'm going to show you how I paint and detail it. After priming everything black, it was time to make those random bricks and stone look more like a wall. I wanted to fill the gaps and make it look like, at one point, the wall had been plastered over, as if it was a foundation for a building. Here I'm just using a sculpting tool to manipulate some joint compound, the stuff that you spread on regular walls in your house. I spread it everywhere, and I also dabbed off a little bit with a paper towel to give it a little bit more texture on the stone portion. did the same process with the archway for the river. After that, I thought the top of the wall needed a little bit more texture. So I slapped on some regular old PVA glue and then just sprinkled larger stones, smaller stones, and some sand. Even though, in real life, there's probably more building there, I thought this looked cool for the purpose of the diorama, to give the edges a little bit more of a real-world feel, even if it's not as accurate as it probably could be. After spraying it with some isopropyl alcohol, I used a mixture of watered-down PVA glue to fix everything in place. I decided to start painting the bricks first. Here I'm just using a wet palette to hold my paints because this process took quite some time. I wanted to make most of the bricks their own individual color because that's what you usually see in real life. Not every brick, but here you can see I'm picking out four or five bricks at a time and painting them all the same color. This does speed it up and mimics real life. When you look at a brick wall, not every brick is just painted red. Plus, if these look a little vibrant to you, we are going to tone everything down with some basic weathering in this video and probably some more intense weathering in an upcoming video. I decided to make the bricks that make up the archway their own individual color. I thought it would add a little bit of variation to it. And that was the bricks done. Again, they do look vibrant now, but that is going to be toned down in other weathering processes. After that, I just base coated the now dry rubble and stones that I glued to the top of the walls, and that'll make it easier to blend those in later. Now it's time to paint the stone. I just reused my wet palette paper by rinsing it off and flipping it over. And now we're just going to start with the same process we did for the bricks. I'm going to use less colors so it's not as overwhelming, but this process did take quite a while to complete. And that's why that wet palette really comes in handy. I was able to work on this over the course of a day and a half or so to paint both the brick and the stone and if you have a wet palette that you can save your paints you can do this paint job in more than one sitting that way you won't mix up what your ratios are and you'll know exactly what colors you were working with it just makes the whole process a little bit more enjoyable and not very stressful. And that's the base coat done. I then started pulling out all the details in the rubble and the top of the wall. I like to paint individual stones their own color, just like we did in the stone wall. I tried to use some more vibrant colors here and just pick out a few and after that, dry brush the rest of the smaller stones. That way it saves time, but you still get that effect. 
I wanted to show more plaster as if the plaster was actually on top of the stone and not just next to it. And then it was time to blend everything together. I used a very light wash of brown and a very light wash of black oil paints. Since this plaster really absorbs the pigment, I wanted to start really light and gradually build up this color little by little. And I think this helps blend everything together and tones down some of the contrast between the stone and the grout. So we went over everything with these washes. It probably took three or four coats to get it really looking the way I wanted to. And you can see again, I used some green on the bottom. And I think that is where we're going to stop this week. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned till next time, and we're going to work on the groundwork. See you then.